All righty. Hello, everybody. My name is Shanna Fold, and I am your host for this evening. I join you as the marketing manager from Propel. And today's topic is journalist pet peeves of PR pitching. We are going to hear from journalists and PR professionals to talk about best practices when working with the other side. That's what I call it. I call it the other side. I don't know what you guys call it, but I've been calling it the other side. Today, we have video journalist Sheena LZ of Spectrum News Cincinnati with us and Peter Duckler, Senior Group Director for Earned Media at Real Chemistry. He is based in LA. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So our guests are here to talk with us about their pain points in working with the other side, in addition to always having had trouble working together, coming from different companies with different objectives, each each news and PR, you each have your own objectives. Of course, what we want is media coverage, but the, the road to get there is not always so clear cut. And in addition to that, COVID-19 has flipped that upside down, literally changed strategies for news outlets, as well as media agencies pitching these stories and managing stories. So we're going to discuss these challenges. And I don't even want to say that we're going to discuss it through a COVID lens. I'm just going to say that we're discussing it through a modern lens because we've had COVID with us for a year, more than a year now. So I'm just going to say 2021. And um, PR professionals call it earned media. Journalists call it pressers or press conferences or or PR story. So today we're going to go through a handful of topics that make getting the work accomplished difficult, challenging, and we're also going to hear from you, Peter, as a PR professional about your grievances and your difficulties when it comes to working with reporters. Some of the topics that we are going to cover include controlling PR professionals before, during, and after timeliness of pitches. Did this pitch come to the journalist before the event, after the event already happened, the ways to be pitched considering a journalist's preferences and other grievances that we have when working with the other side. We at Propel decided to do this because we are a technology company. And what we do is we offer a software to fill in the gaps between journalists and PR agencies in order to help them just have a smoother existence. So we're talking about getting out of Excel sheets, okay, Mm -hmm. having or having information that is available to everyone on your team, being able to share contacts and relationships and notes that reporters and um, your agents have and share them with the rest of your organization so that it's not just one relationship that's being nurtured. Everyone can benefit from it. And of course, that also benefits the journalist because when the time comes for a PR agent to reach out to you, Sheena, they will know a little bit, uh, they'll have a little bit of a leg up and um, also be a little bit more aware of what your station might be putting out, what stories you might be covering because we have these search engines that make that available. And so um, I just also want to say that I came to this idea after seeing something that you, Sheena, wrote about in a private group called MM Jane. And this is a Facebook group. It's just for female reporters. And what we do is we discuss issues, challenges that we have in our day-to-day work as multimedia journalists. And it really hit home for me as I'm doing marketing with this PR software that this is a topic that doesn't need to be as difficult if just we could have some communication between the reporters and the PR agents. So, Sheena, I would like to start with you. Um, I would love for you to release and unleash all of the anxieties that you experienced the other day. But briefly, can you walk us through the event that led you to write in this support group? Yeah, so I wrote that post because it was just turned out to be an overall frustrating day. And that just kind of added to that. So that day I was supposed to do um, an interview, um, some doctors with the hospital about uh, the vaccine. So, um, but I think what got in the way was the per- the PR person's um, 
wanting to control just about every aspect of it. Um, she, from the interview to what's being asked, to what's being said, to what's being written, it was just too much. And um, at one point she had, had said to me, well, um, I mean, I have an interview of somebody who got the vaccine already and she already, t we already did that part. We did everything. Um, so whatever a journalist needs, we have it there right there for you. And I said, the only thing I need really is that person's contact information so I can do it myself. But she was like not willing to even give that person's contact information or put me in touch with her or get in touch with her herself so I can do my part of the job, you know, which is to do the interview, the, to write and to edit. It was like she was doing it for me, like unnecessarily. So, and not the way that I would tell the story. And I think that's why they did the interview themselves so they can edit it and have what they want out there. And that's fine if that's what you want to do, but the way I'm going to tell the story is not the same way. And I might not ask the same questions. So it got to the point where um, I was talking to my boss, my executive producer about it. And he was like, you know what, we'll just go to another hospital. You know, there's more than one hospital in town. Like this is not, this is unnecessary <laughs> with the back and forth. So that's where the post <laughs> came from. And um, I was really surprised that there were so many other comments that followed with other journalists who, um, went through the same experience or had other um, issues in the same way. I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like I, I can't stand when this happens. Okay. That is all. And like, you know, it, it sparked like a slew of comments. So um, it just speaks to, you know, the issue, but yeah. don't get me wrong. There are some very great PR people out there. And when it works, when that relationship works, it, everything goes smoothly and it's great. You know, but sometimes it's just, it gets in the way, you know, or that person and kind of gets in the way. <laughs> to yeah, <say> absolutely. <laughs> and um, I saw Peter having some great facial reactions there. So Peter, do you relate to this type of behavior? And more than that, can you kind of give us what might be going on behind the scenes to bring a PR professional to behave this way? Um, and I'll give you one more. When you have these demands coming from your client, how do you mitigate them for earned media? Because this is supposed to be earned media, right? You know, I was nodding because I actually represent a, a major medical center. And I think, you know, there's some elements of what your frustration is, is also frustrations that we have as well. Um, there are certain things that are, are kind of go with the territory. So if you're interviewing a patient, the client, because of HIPAA and because of all sorts of other issues, they want us on the phone to staff the interview, right? Now, sometimes that's not always the case or with our executives, we want to, whenever possible, we can be there. But, and this is a big but, you know, I don't feel it's our role unless the interview is going awry to interfere with that. You have a story to tell, and it's our job to prepare the spokesperson or the consumer or the patient for the, for the discussion. So I do think it's completely fair. I think one of the things that journalists and reporters hate and they hear from PR people is, can you tell me the questions that you're going to ask? And I think part of that is because, you know, we need to make sure our executives or the patients or the consumers who may not be, you know, experienced, feel comfortable. And for a lot of times, this is their first time. So we do want to coach them and make sure that we're delivering a great interview, but we don't want it to become, you know, where we're telling, this is what you can say, this is what you can't say. It's our job to prepare, to prepare you, and to make sure you have the best interview. And that's the frustration, right? Like the clients will say, um, you know, I want a list of questions. And I have a lot of friends that are journalists like, I hate this question. And I said, you have to understand, it's our job to make sure that our executives are prepared, all the spokesperson's prepared, and we're giving you what you need. But what you're describing sounds a little bit too much, right? Like when I staff an interview, you know, I'm quiet. 
I'm really there to kind of assess kind of what's needed to get the story. Did the interview or the person show up? But anything that happens, I need to do behind the scenes before you even get to that point. You know, I think it's fair for us as PR people when working with journalists to ask some basic questions. You know, what's the focus of the story? What are you hoping to accomplish? Who else are you talking to? This helps us evaluate who's the right spokesperson or best story to give you. But we do not have the right to interfere during the interview, try to control the story because it's earned. It's not paid or sponsored, right? And really, at the end of the day, ensure that everyone is well represented, including the reporter, the client, and any third-party voice that we bring to the table. Okay, so Peter, I had um, a, a question that came up for me, and um, I think that my question is, as a journalist, we do so many interviews, it's almost shocking for us to even think that it could be so difficult for someone to muster up answers to what we consider as basic questions. You know, how did you feel after you get the shot? Sheena, you you would know what you asked. So I think it's good that you did bring a little bit of that awareness about um, about what somebody might be going through when they are up for an interview from us. And because we do it so often, it seems like such a not big deal for us. Why do they need the questions? We're, we know that we're not going to ask you anything that's going to be harmful to you and your mental health. I mean, sometimes it's just laziness, right? Like laziness from the PR person's perspective, right? Because it's fair for us to know and ask and align on what the story is generally and what you were hoping to accomplish during the interview. But it's our responsibility then to make sure that the spokesperson's prepared, that they're authentic, right? They're, they're, they're speaking naturally. They're not speaking brand speak. They're, you know, and they're fully prepared, right? Because at the end of the day, um, Sheena just needs to get a good interview, right? As easy as possible. She wants to get in and she wants to get out, right? And she doesn't want, she wants to have an authentic conversation. And so you don't want someone interfering, and especially with broadcast, and especially during COVID, when a lot of this stuff is happening, we, we, we have to just have faith if we do the preparation that the people are going to give a good interview. But it's not our role or responsibility, and it's our right to try to interject during the interview, unless it's going off the rails, which rarely happens, but it does, um, and really let the spokesperson speak for themselves. And let and 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 listen. It's through the conversations, right, that someone's going to think of. Oh, that was really interesting. I want to unpack that a little bit more. I want to understand that, right? And so, if you have are getting interrupted by a public a PR person um, that just disrupts the flow, and it really makes everybody uncomfortable. Yeah. So. I think what she was trying, like, I think she really was trying to be helpful and she, she wasn't jumping in cause we hadn't scheduled anything yet, but she was saying here, we did the interview. We, we took it already. You can use this. And I, what I was trying to do was say, you know, I'd rather do it myself. Absolutely. And I think, and I think during COVID, I, cause times are kind of changing a little bit, like, cause during COVID, a lot of marketing teams were going in the hospitals because we weren't allowed to. So right. they will go right. in and do some of the interviews and send it back. And during those times, it was helpful. But now that we're doing in person, you know, um, and I explained that to her, like, you know, I'd rather I'd rather do it myself now, now that we're doing going back in person. So but I mean, reasonable. and quite honestly, I totally agree with your boss when it said there's lots of other people that we could go to. And you know what? I want to be one of those other people that you go to because we understand it. It's our role, right? Like we spend so much time. I'll use this um, hospital example. Um, we get some really interesting, fascinating patient stories. But even before we pitch it, we want to talk to them because it's one thing to see it on paper or a doctor says this is a really good patient story, but we just want to see, are they really a good interview? Or what are some of the interesting nuggets that won't, because they're not pros, naturally come out? So to me, it's really becoming, you know, an understanding what a reporter, or in this case, Sheena needs, so that when I offer her the story, she can just go with it and run with it. And everybody's prepared. There's no surprises. 
And that's, you know, and that's how you build relationships, right? And that's why people on my team consistently get called back all the time. You know, there's lots of cases too, where there's things out of our control. An executive has to fly out at the last minute or a patient becomes sick. And one of the things we're always doing is saying, okay, it's time to pivot and scramble. Who can we offer up? And it may not even be my client. You know, I at least come from an agency where we have 50 people on our earned media team. So I can't tell you how many times a day we're just chasing opportunities that may not be one of my clients, but it's because we want to become that go-to person, that go-to resource um, for journals. And it happens all the time where they'll call, this is what I'm looking for. Duckler, you can share it with your colleagues. This is exactly what I want. And instead of like a dozen pitches, we're very concise. Based on your interest, here's who we have, just enough background, links as appropriate. So our friends can look at it and say, yes, this person, this person, and this person is perfect. This is why. And we can just be more efficient and have a really great relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, and, and I think those are the best, um, the best ones that you can get quickly, efficiently, and kind of, they are kind of an expert or at least know what it is you're going to talk about. So I don't mind when people ask me, you know, um, what are the questions? Um, because, I mean, I, 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 I won't tell someone exactly what I'm going to ask because it really depends on where the conversation goes. So I, if you were to ask me that, because I get asked that by people who aren't in PR, right? But I would, I always say to people who ask me that, like, here's a general idea of what I'm going to be talking about. I may ask you some follow-up questions depend, depending on what you say. So, but yeah, I, that doesn't bother me. Like, that's good. So then, you know, you know, who to, who to recommend, but yeah. Okay. So awesome conversation, lots of great understanding. And uh, what I want to move into is something that actually I, a lot of the topics that we're talking about, the ones that I selected for today are things that overlap between the two of you which was really special to me. I asked each of you to present five of your top issues and I selected the ones that had the most overlap and there were three of them. And the next one that I wanna move into is um, timeliness. Now, each of you selected different uh, ideas about time, but that is so indicative of each of your objectives and where you're coming from, how, how each of you interacted with the time. So Sheena, you talked about um, having a PR agent reach out to you about an interview and then that person not being available to interview until next week or in two weeks from now. And, and maybe a little bit less now with COVID, but usually the news cycle is 24 hours. And so we need to get these stories out very quickly. So we talk, what I want to talk about here is did the pitch come before the event or after the event? I had never heard of this before, but some people were writing in the thread that um, they were getting pitches from PR professionals after the event was already over, kind of like uh, they were trying to scrape, you know, do a last scrape together of whoever they could get to cover it. Did the PR agent knock it back to you promptly? And uh, this is this is where after Sheena gives us her response to this, we're going to move into you, Peter, where we talk about um, the news cycle and how it relates to the more featurey pitches that you want to do for your clients. And last thing I just want to say is that I'm really glad that we started out with this hospital story because Peter does a lot of medical and uh, technological related coverage. So I think this is a really great moment and it and just works with COVID. So Sheena, tell us about your grievances when it comes to time. So yeah, so I think you hit the nail on the head with a lot of it is um, I think the biggest thing being when I get a press release and I'm like, okay, that sounds like an interesting story. Then I call the contact person on that release and they're like, oh, well, we don't have anybody to talk to you, you know, (laughs) or let me get back to you. And then they don't get back for like several hours. Then it's like my deadline's already passed. I'm on to another story already. So yeah, and I have gotten press releases after the event happened. 
<laughs> so it'll be like something that happened over the weekend and they might send pictures and a really long, you know, article. And I'm like, wait, what are you asking me to do? Oh, oh, that happened already. Okay. Well, I don't care about that anymore. You know? So, you know, I, I want to be able to be there so I can get pictures and video, you know, I think sometimes there's like a lack of understanding with some maybe greener PR people who don't know the difference between like, what we need for TV and what maybe a newspaper article might need. Like we need more than pictures and words for in our, in TV, you know, we need video, we need interviews and sound bites with people. So, um, so after the fact, it's just like, yeah. okay, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> I mean, that's so, crazy. I'm sorry. You know, you know, I think one of the things, you know, we actually at our agency, we have about, three former journalists, broadcast journalists from national networks. And we do a lot of education. And I just think generally, you know, there's people that do it right. And we, I feel like we, we do it right because we say no all the time to our clients because they don't understand, right? And they may say, oh, we're having this event in five hours, in three hours. And I'm like, you missed your opportunity. Like we need time, and I, especially in this environment and in this news cycle, and in a time when, you know, people like Sheena are working and getting bombarded with so much communications, we're making them work. We're making you work too hard. Um, it's, you know, you need to, if you're a PR person, you need to be able to articulate one sentence. What's the story? Who's your expert? What they can talk about? And then what I'd like to add is here are some elements to bring the story to life, especially now. And if it's think about B-roll, right? There's going to be no time to chase it down. It's harder to get crews, right? But talking heads are boring. You know, is there third parties or other people not related that can easily share a point of view? Is there data or infographics? Package it and make it so easy. So if I'm on the news desk, I get hundreds of pitches. I can scan and see, oh, this person looks good. This topic is timely. These are the elements of the story. Guess who you're going to go with? You're not going to go with someone that sends me this long press release about an event that happened and you have to connect the dots to figure out how to make it relevant to your audience. Not going to work. And so I do think, you know, this is the responsibility of a PR agent um, to educate their clients. And to say no, I say no all the time, but I'll say no, but you could do this and explain the challenges and how you, and how I like to frame it is this is how you build relationships. So they'll keep calling you and that they'll want you to come back in the back because at the end of the day, you deliver, you make it easy to get the story, you know? Sometimes, you know, you could go with many different people, but that's who you're going to go with, right? And so, absolutely. I mean, I always like, if I'm an event, I'd like to like at least start the outreach a week in advance. Mm -hmm. It could be even longer because there's so many elements to this in terms of, especially in this environment, on how they might want to cover. And if logistics are needed, you know, you need to account for that. You know, I will say, especially in a hospital setting, the challenge sometimes is these are docs and they're busy, right? And they may not be free. And so one of the things that we've done is, is said, listen, we, we have these go-to experts, but let's focus, you know, on what we like to call rapid response. Who are the folks that really can respond in a timely manner? Because things change in a moment and those that win those that have share of voice are those that are available that can articulate a point of view right away um, and are going to take the call. I mean, listen, all good PR people have their cell phone or their watch 24 seven and you have to be wired for that. You know, I, I get yelled at all the time for like always looking at my phone, but news is 24 seven and I have clients on the East coast and West coast and it's not nine to five and opportunities come up all the time, you know? Right. And, so. I think you're, and I think you're absolutely right about um, 
you know, coming back because if I can work with a PR person and it goes smoothly and they really helped me to get somebody really quickly, then I'm going to come back to them if I've got another story, even if I don't have a press release, but I know I have a story about that I need a doctor for. So uh, I'm going to call you because I know last time you got me a doctor really quickly when, when you sent out the press release. Now I don't have a press release, but they want me to cover, you know, more COVID stuff. So I know you can get that person fast. So, um, so yeah, it does make you definitely, you know, want to, um, go back and be, I know there were several, um, after we pivoted from that, that one hospital, I went back to the same person who I work with at a different hospital, you know, before, like several times after that. And every time she would get me a different, um, doctor who specializes in whatever topic it was that I was talking about. And it really worked. It, it even got to the point where my EP was like, all right, we need to pick a different, <laughs> right, right. we need to pick it because all the um, doctors are coming from this one hospital. We need to you know, pick a different one now. But um, so that's, I think you were right about that. That's what happens when it, when it really works out. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm really happy that we talked about these time issues and, um, Peter, there was something that you mentioned to me that I wanted to rephrase, which was uh, you talked about topics needing to be relevant and timely, and that sometimes your pitches for topics that are relevant and timely are actually getting ignored and are getting pushed out by something that might pop up in the news cycle or something that happens, um, a historic event. We've had a lot of tragedies this year. And yeah. sometimes you might have a whole story planned and and primed and primed and primed and and something happens and throws it all out the window. Is there this year more than ever? I think you know that. Just honestly, this this goes with the territory right now, and everyone needs to realize they need to pivot. They also need going back to our earlier question about I need to know the questions. We as professionals need to prepare our clients to address what's happening at that moment in time, even if that's not what we pitched, because if something's happening, whether it's Black Lives Matter or whatever, and this is what everybody's talking about, it's very safe to assume that she may ask that question. It's relevant, you know? And so we need to be prepared for that. I think what I was getting to, you know, is, and this is actually one of the reasons why I love Propel so much is we absolutely believe we do not what we call spray and pray. We'll never use a platform and just get out press releases to hundreds of people and hope that somebody responds, right? And so we'll really follow the data to try to pinpoint the absolute right outlet and where possible person. And even before the pitch goes out, see how they've been covering the topic. To, to really kind of make sure our pitch sings and is relevant. You know, we have like those journalists that I mentioned that work at our agency. They are no longer journalists. They're still getting pitches. And so we share it all the time. And so it's probably very similar to um, that Facebook group. Can you, and you know, we love it because, and I love it because it, to me, it's like, this is what you don't do. And guess what? Journalists are posting it on Twitter right now. Like I see it all the time. Like they'll flag bad PR pitches and that's the last thing any of us ever want. So going back to a frustration though, spend all this time really crafting a pitch and you get no feedback. And, and someone looked at it. I know the reality. The reality is reporter has 500 emails in the last few hours they just don't have the time they're jumping from story to story but as we're trying to build relationships i got this this is really good but my editor doesn't want me to cover this you know it makes it difficult to forge a relationship and i know it's because of all the bad apples that makes it challenging so what do we do it's absolutely critical that we follow through and that we earn our reputation and then you get the luxury of okay, Duckler, this is why I didn't do your story. You know what I mean? So Yeah. So one thing that I'm glad that you brought up, Peter, about Propel is that our software has a um, monitoring. 
and the monitoring section, you can open it up and it will tell you what's trending on which social media platform. You can see what's trending and you can also look by outlet. So if I wanted to pitch Sheena, I could open up Spectrum and see what web um, articles have been published from your web desk. And I can see what way your newsroom is leaning. And so I think that that is really important. And of course, what clients love the most about Propel is the plugin for the email. It works in Outlook or in Gmail. And basically, it's very awesome because what you can do is you can just automatically track your uh, correspondences with reporters. So if I've been corresponding with Sheena and I also corresponded with 12 other reporters and sent them all a press uh, a presser about a event at a hospital, I can, it will automatically take that data, put it into what we call the story funnel. And so now I can see in my campaign who has picked up my my request for coverage, where we're at in that. Is, is there an interview set up? Did we complete it already? How many people viewed it? And what the impact also, which is really awesome. You can see the impact of your coverage. Sheena might be less in, in might be less important for you. But if we already secured a package with you and that aired, their, our data tracks exactly what impact that had, how many people saw it, um, what, did, what kind of emotion did that shake up in people. And so it's really effective for the relationship. Well, you know, all of that is great. And yes, I love all of that. But just to make it relevant even to Sheena, gosh, Gosh forbid we give someone a day off, which we actually do. Um, but, you know, obviously the first thing, you know, especially for us media folks is I'm out, contact this colleague if you're on deadline. And so for me, and this happens all the time, she is on deadline. She was working with my colleague, Sylvia. She contacts me. I actually go into Propel and I can see kind of what the story was or the discussion and we put next steps so that anyone on the team can come in and then the reporter doesn't have to be like okay well this is what i was doing you know it's like i can call she and say hey sheena sylvia's out but i got you and you know what do we need i it looks like you need b-roll whatever it may be and that's really to be the other power right because at the end of the day she just wants to get the story she's on deadline <laughs> you know, and she has like, all these other stories to do. Yeah. So that really helps. And well, and when it comes to the email too, um, you know, you're right. We get hundreds of emails all the time, lots of story pitches. Some of them almost sound like commercials. <laughs> but I think if you just stick to the who, what, where, when, and we can scan and decide right there, um, you you might get a response much faster. Absolutely. But even if you don't, I would still just keep sending them because like me, I'm a general assignment reporter. So I don't have just one area, you know, or one specific topic that I cover. I cover the gamut of it. So I'd rather have you send it to me and then I know about it. And then in our morning meeting, when we discuss what stories we're going to cover, we can talk, I can at least talk about that and pitch it to producers and everybody else, you know, all the bosses and say, okay, is this something we want to do today? Or, or do we want to do something else? So, um, but sometimes because I've had it happen where um, sometimes, you know, one station will cover something. And I'm like, man, I know that PR person. Why didn't they tell me about it? <laughs> I would have done that, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, or maybe that it didn't get to me. So I would say just, you know, even if you don't get a response, <laughs> just keep sending it out. <laughs> and like in as short, as short sentences as possible, the shortest sentence as possible. Yes. Um, well, so I think, it. This, you know, one of the things that has been made much more difficult is because so many people are working remotely, it's not like you can pick up the phone and call anymore, right? Like I feel weird about calling someone's cell phone unless I'm working with them on something and they're on deadline, right? You know, um, and so that's been a challenge and it becomes even more important than to not only be persistent, but only be, you know, for me, it's like, be persistent if you really truly believe you have a good story. Don't be persistent if you think, I have some numbers I need to hit and I need to show the client some movement. And so I want to say I followed up. No, don't do that. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm glad but that I, you guys are talking about pitching. Sheena, I have another question for you. Are you ready for it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about was this interesting thing that I didn't really know existed. Um, I didn't know that this existed, but it's called pitching preferences. And um, our platform has the option for, well, first of all, the PRM has pitching preferences and it offers data about open rates um, and we call it aggregated anonymized data. So basically from all of the reporters that are getting pitches, the natural language learning will pick up on what topics are being at least opened the most by reporters. What's getting a response from reporters? And that data can be very helpful for someone like Peter who wants to decide whether this week is a good week to pitch a hospital story or if this week where you know the media is covering more something else or are we focusing on injections are we focusing on politics let's say what's what's getting opened so that's great but more than that i thought for to talk to you about this um, because i haven't shared this with any other journalist yet which is very cool is that propel has something called the contact profile and what it means is that we can make a note next to your name. If you are someone that we work with, we can open up your little card and it's kind of like a card that you might have in a Rolodex, but it's virtual and it'll have your name and um, it'll say something like, doesn't pick up the phone in the morning. Um, and this will be something, this will be notes that, that somebody personal that you know would be able to input about you and share just with their uh, organization or agency. So do you have, uh, preferences. Do you prefer to be pitched in the afternoon? Do you mind if a PR professional calls you on the phone? Do you prefer email? And more than that, how does it make you feel as a journalist knowing that people using this software actually have this specific data about you? Does it make you feel encouraged? Do you feel good? Do you wish the PR professionals knew your preferences or, or what? Um, well, for me, the easiest thing for me, if um, somebody has an idea or a PR person has an idea is to email because that way I have it in front of me and I can take it with me to my morning meeting. And when my producers are asking me a hundred questions about it, I can look back at that email and say, okay, well, here's what's happening. You know, here's what's going on. Here's what time it is. Here's where it is. Cause they're going to ask me all those questions um, during that meeting. So I prefer to have it in the email um, and that way I can save it too and look back at it like, oh, well, I didn't get that for this morning's meeting, but tomorrow I'll pitch it tomorrow in our morning meeting. So for me, I like to have an email. And then if it's something that we're going to go ahead and go with, then I will reach out to you because the last thing I would want is, you know, for my phone to be constantly ringing with just pitches. Um, like, but if it's something that like, I reach out to you and say, okay, I want to do this, you know, then let's talk, you know, let's talk, text, anything. It doesn't, you know, I'm okay with whatever time it is, if it's, um, for a story that I need to get on right now, you know? So, but for, for just pitches, um, I would say email is probably the best route to go. Amazing. And what do you, how do you feel about people having specifics about you? Do you wish that more PR professionals had some specifics, like could had the opportunity to create and share a note among their colleagues that says, Sheena wants it in email. Don't call her. Like, do you feel comfortable with, do you, are you looking forward for something like that? Yeah. I mean, I think that would be helpful on both ends. So then you, you know, the best way to get in touch yeah, so I think that would definitely um, that would definitely be helpful for sure. Peter, have you found this? You use Propel, and you are actually putting this into practice, and you're working with reporters, and you're pitching reporters, um, and you know what works and what doesn't work. Has this been useful for you? It has, especially to. There's a couple of things you haven't mentioned that are really. There's so much interesting things that Propel data lets us do, but um, you know. I can see when someone opens up a store, my, my pitch, or they didn't. So was my pitch not good? Well, it's obviously the subject line needed work because they didn't even open it, right? But I also can see every time Shana opens up an email. So it's kind of exciting, right? Oh, they must be thinking about my story because they keep looking at it, you know? And then I'm like, come on, respond to me, you know? Um, but I think more important is especially, you know, we're, uh, we, 
we're all healthcare all the time. And there's going to be overlap. We're a very big agency. I have over 50 people on my team. So I kind of like to look at Propel just to make sure I don't have 10 people calling the same reporter, you know, pitching different stories. You know, if that's the case, I'm going to back off, you know. But also there's some really interesting intel that we're getting, right? And a lot of times people will share with us. And so it just doesn't make us look good if we're not sharing that information. So if everyone on my team has that before they send a pitch and can kind of look at these best practices, they're going to be more successful. And it's really interesting, you know, we can now see, you know, not only which reporters, you know, we really have great relationships with because of our success rates, but also maybe who's the right person to call or pitch because there's certain people that are kind of really own the relationship. And that's fine, you know, and then we kind of will help facilitate an introduction or even an idea. Um, So there's a lot of now, I mean, at the end of the day, when you break it all down, we want everyone to be our friends. We want everyone to enjoy working with us. And these tools really help us establish those relationships. And listen, you know, the last thing I ever want to be called, and maybe this is an outdated topic, is a flack. We're not flacks, you know, we're not. Like, we're really trying to get our clients' stories. You know, we're storytellers too. And we're trying to use the data to tell the best stories to the right people and deliver at the right time. I mean, that's really true. And so to me, this topic is like, I totally get it because I get, I was junior once too. Um, and it's my job to really make sure that we're educating our junior staff so they absolutely know, you know, how to best reach out and what's going to be successful. I just want to say something really yeah. quick to, to um, <laughs> the, the term that you just used. Um, I think it is, might be a little bit of an older term because the only person I've ever heard say that is an, a really old producer I had like years ago. Oh, I'm an old that. And no, no, but he, he, his, he always would say this. He would always say, don't ever wait for a flack. That's what he would always say because um, he would be like, Sheena, where are you at with your story? I'm like, well, I'm waiting for this PR person to get back to me. And he would always say, don't ever wait for <laughs> It just made me think of that. So it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the timing. You know, that really um, is very important, plays a huge role <laughs> on how quickly someone gets back to you. So <laughs> I love that. I love I love all the lingo. It's so fun. <laughs> So I want to head toward our close and I want to ask um, a spicy question, which is, and I want each of you to answer it. What is something that you wished that you could say to the other side that wasn't acceptable or appropriate? Um, I don't know. I think we just hit it. We just, (laughs) we went through it. I think we just talked about it. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. (laughs) I mean, I I will say one of the things that I've learned during this pandemic, I think all of us is we're all human, right? We're all struggling, right? We were all have gone through a real rough time and let's just be human. Let's be honest. Let's be authentic. Right. And let's, you know, cut out, cut out all that. I mean, I, I once remember, and I was being lazy, like, and I was doing this pitch and it had so much jargon. And the reporter actually called me out and was like, Peter, can you just speak English? And I was like, you know, looking through the approved messages and she was kind of being tough. And I, I, I took a step back. I thought about it and she was absolutely right. And so I took this opportunity. I actually apologized. I said, let me just break it down. Three simple things, why this matters. Boom, boom, boom. And now we have an amazing relationship. She called me on it. I deserved it, you know, and now she's one of my besties go-to person and she's fantastic. And we do a lot of stories together. So, you know, even things that could come across as being, you know, animosity, you can turn it around, just be human, be authentic, understand the role and what people need to do. And we're all in this together to, to tell great stories that are appropriate, that people want to watch, read, you know, and share. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, 
we we all got we all have a job to do you know you you guys have your job to do and we have our job to do and just as long as we don't get in each other's way but work together i think then then it can go smoothly because i've worked with some really great pr people you know but it, it's the bad apples that you know stand out in your mind but when it works it absolutely it it absolutely is great and you can definitely build relationships definitely absolutely and if there's any good apples out there send me your resume <laughs> we only hire good apples. Okay, great. Well, I'm calling you next time I have a hospital story. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, guys. This was so awesome. I don't know if you could tell by the smile plastered on my face for this entire segment and on yours as well. I think that was a really beautiful way to end and also just fascinating. I mean, the thing is that we both have an idea of what the other person is thinking and what their objectives are, but we don't always have the time or the luxury or the privilege to sit down and talk about these things. And that's why I wanted to carve out this time. And that's why we at Propel wanted to carve out this time, because we're all about making things more efficient. And we're all about eliminating the issues that pitching reporters comes with and finding a better way to be more organized so that the client and the journalist and the interviewee and interviewer all are able to come together on the right time and in an organized way and in a way that is pitched in the right way. And um, of course, we want to make everything individualized, which is one of the best things about Propel is that we get to make our pitches individual and be able to speak with people like you, Sheena and Peter, about what you're and, and, and use all that data to make things more streamlined and efficient. So I'm glad that we got to hear from you. As the great Edward R. Murrow would say, good night and good luck. If you guys have any last um, note that you want to say before we sign off, my name is Shana Fold and I'm the marketing manager at Propel. Thank you for being with us. Peter and Sheena, you can, you can sign out as you like. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Nice to meet you, Peter. It's so nice to meet you. All right. Take care. All righty. Thank you, everyone. Bye.